sweaty hot days, doing statistics at Texas A&M. Can you tell me how to get, how to get the CDF for this issue? You were, you're not going to sing a little bit? It's just me by myself. I really am alone. This is a famous distribution. It's called the exponential distribution. It's famous because it's actually useful in real life and it has a range that goes from 0 to infinity. Picture looks like this. Higher values of x have a dropped probability. You can go to infinity as long as it still integrates to 1. And in this case, when you plug in infinity, e to the negative infinity, your math teacher would say you got to take a limit. But you're going to get 0 minus the negative 1. So yes, it integrates to 1. Yes, for all positive values of x, you're going to get a positive result. So this counts as a genuine PDF. I'm going to try to figure out the CDF by integrating from 0 up to x of the function. And I'm throwing in the y so that I don't get confused about this x versus those x's. And here's the way it looks. Um, this famous distribution is often written with this positive one in front, just because it looks nicer. So now we can do probabilities of anything up to x. Let's try something a little trickier than the last video. X being in the range from 4 to 8. And even trickier, it's got to be exclusively greater than 4, but it could be equal to 8. What's going to happen? First off, this equal sign doesn't actually matter. There's no area for an exact probability. So you can ignore that part. I'm going to plug in the 4 and the 8 into this equation. And what that gives me is the area from 8 down to 0, also the area from 4 down to 0. So if I want the area in between them, what I'm going to do is take the big area from the 8, that's the 48% minus the 28%, leaves me with the 20% as that area in between that range. Now, one thing we haven't talked about yet is what about the median? Before, we counted up these probabilities until we got to 50%. Same idea here, but instead of counting up discrete probabilities, we're going to integrate up to the median and have that be 50%. In other words, where's the line that 50% of the area was to one side of it, which also means 50% to the other side. This, doing the integration up to some value, is the same as the f of x. So we could rewrite this as the f of x at m needs to equal 50%. And yeah, now you've got to try to solve for m. Moving things to the other side, that's going to involve a natural log to counteract the e. But we can finally solve for m as 8.32. So this CDF, the capital F of x, is useful in a lot of places. Do keep in mind, x's are going to have the same restriction. You should only be plugging in x's within this range. What is the f of x below the range? Well, zero, because there was no probability to add up. If the range went from zero to 10, what happens to f of x when you go past the 10? It stays at 100% because that was capturing all the probability. So it certainly surprise you that all the stuff we did with the discrete stuff is going to match on the continuous side, except instead of summations, we're going to talk about using integrals. And here for the median, I'm going to write it using the capital F of m. How do you get that capital F? 0 up to x, and we use f of y instead of f of dy. You know what? It's hard to point because it's mirror image when I'm looking in the camera. Master, are, are you pointing at me? But these tricks are going to help us to be able to find probabilities. Next video, we'll talk about some more expected value tricks.